Hello, my friends, and welcome back to J.S. Modern Bushcraft and Survival. Um, I know a lot of you are probably pretty anxious for me to get the, uh, the rest of my week-long winter camping trip edited up and posted, but um, unfortunately, something I wasn't aware of is that while I was out there on that trip, um, I was actually having some health problems, and when I got back, um, they turned into some really health, serious health problems, and I ended up in the hospital. I've been out for a few days now. I've been recovering, and uh, haven't really been in the mood to edit just yet, but I will get there. I will get them out, um, but one thing I figured I'd do, because I was feeling a little motivated today was work on reprofiling some axes and blades. Uh, now, if you've seen any of, uh, well, the earlier videos where I, I did a little restoration work on this old S-Twing hatchet, um, this came out really well. I created the sheath out of canvas, and I actually did a video showing how I made that uh, water resistant by waxing it. And while I'm really happy with the, the profile, the weight, and the functionality of this axe, I believe the plum is Probably about a pound and a quarter. I'm not really sure. But I believe it's about a pound and a quarter. It's got really good heft to it. Um, one of the cool things too about this style is that the actual pole is hardened just like the uh, axe bit is. So it's great for hammering, tent stakes, things like that. Um, you really have to do a number on that to uh, mess that up. But it's hung very, very well. This was hung by um, Mike's Axe Works. And I'll put a link to his... Um, website in my description you can see how nice that handle fits it's a really thin handle a lot of um a lot of these stock handles they come so thick um especially even the new you know decent quality axes that you buy the handles are just so thick and it's um it's kind of counterintuitive they think oh well you know, a beefier handle means that it's not going to break as easy. But in reality, a hatchet handle has to flex um, and absorb shock. And the thicker that is, like a baseball bat, you know, it's going to crack. That's why baseball bats crack a lot. Um, the handle he chose that has really good grain structure to it. And uh, he didn't lacquer it in it or anything. It's just boiled linseed oil, so you get a nice good grip on it. I think this axe came out beautiful. And then lastly, I had him hang for me a uh, an old Holtz Brooks Agdor axe. And this is um, this is what I took with me on my week-long camping trip. Now, this is um, a little bit heavier of a head. This is a 2.1-pound head. And I had him put it. Normally, like, uh, you'd see something like this on about a 25-inch handle. I recommended um, he go with a 22-inch handle. I figured it'd be a little bit more packable. Um, if I bring it over here to my pack, 
you can kind of see if I drop it down in the compression straps. I just kind of lean it up against there and you can see how well it kind of fits that that pack so there's there's not too much hanging down not too much sticking up and with the sheath on it he made a really nice uh, leather sheath that came with it it's just the uh, perfect little camp axe and again the handle nice and thin you know it's not overly bulky great weight to it Great for delimbing, but again, this was done by Mike's Axe Works. So that's pretty much the array of axes that I have now. And between those three, I can pretty much get any little job I need done. But anyway, the point of the video today, I wanted to focus on reprofiling the edge. Now, while I'm, I am very, very happy with how he hung these heads, these heads are older heads. These are not brand new. I'm, I mean, you can see on this one, it's... Uh, Old enough to where somebody, it looks like they tried to carve their initials into it. Now, here's the problem that I've, I've noticed. If you look at this bevel. You can see how you get a nice even bevel. And then all of a sudden it starts to dip right there. And if you look at it from this direction, okay, so you can see where this bevel, you know, I'm just going to do this on paper, but in the center, the bevel seems to be fine. Okay, I'm going to get a little fancy here with my laser pointer. Now, if you look at the center of the edge, here, the bevel is even. And that's the way it should be. But if you look at the toe, it's kind of kiltered off to one side. And the same thing with the heel, if you flip it around. And what that does, and now this is a little exaggerated, but it gives you this S shape. If you look at it edge down. Not exactly ideal. I mean, even if you're just going to use this for splitting, obviously, the straighter that line you start to split with is, the better that's going to split. And even this, um, even this larger Agdor had uh, slight, slightly the same issue, not to such an extent this one should not take much work to fix but it is noticeable and it is there and it will affect your cutting A 
And don't get me wrong. I mean, these these axes came they came very very sharp. But I wanted when I was picking out these axes, I wanted good steel. Um, and part of, you know, when you're dealing with vintage or hand forged steel, you're going to have these issues. And, um, you know, it has nothing to do with how they were hung. If you look at from the edge to the, you know, the base of the handle, they're hung almost perfectly straight. He did an amazing job hanging the heads. Um, there's just some things that, um, honestly, I wouldn't want him to correct because it involves removing a lot of metal. And uh, that's something I could do myself. I'm kind of picky about my grind anyway uh, because I know what I'm going to use the axis for. Therefore, I know what I want them to do. I know I don't need my you know, 15 inch hatchet to really chop down a tree. Um, but the 22 inch forest ax that I want to, I want that to have some bite on it. You know, I want that to take out some good chunks and I want it to be able to drop some, some decent size, uh, trees. So I'll show you how I go about correcting this, uh, this issue. And I don't have, um, I don't have the proper tools. I don't even have a vise. If I had a vise, this would be a lot easier. Um, but as it is, I'm going to have to do this all freehand. Um, but sometimes, you know, it makes you take a little bit more care in your work. And sometimes it can come out just as good, if not better. Okay, so welcome to my workbench. I'm going to start here on this toe. And I'm going to try to get it so that both those grinds here it's very hard to show I'm going to try to get it so that both those grinds line up evenly. And this is how I do that. Without a vise. Now having a good file or a good anvil would make all the difference in the world here. <laughs> now, ideally, you'd want to go one direction, but without a vise, I can't afford to be perfect. So, One thing to point out, too, I want to try to show this from the side. I am not starting at the point or the edge of the blade and working the bevel back. I'm working at the highest part of the bevel or where I want the highest part of the bevel to be. And I'm going to just slowly work that forward until it gets down towards the edge. And the angle that I'm going to use, if you look, I just barely have that file off the eye of that axe. And that's where I'm going to hold it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I was working at this a little bit before I actually started recording. And could you see you could see down towards the edge. I really haven't touched much down here. Still just working up here on this bevel. And I just keep looking. Close one eye. Still not even. So I'm going to do that for a little bit and get back to you. Okay, so I got this bevel here somewhat where I want it on the toe. It's looking... You know, a little bit more even. It's not perfect yet. But, I also haven't touched the edge yet. So I think once I get towards working on the edge, that'll clean up. Now the heel, on the other hand, you can see... Still has a very distinct wobble to it. I mean, it's really got some hook. So, I definitely need to. How can I show that? Definitely need to work on that. I mean, this bevel stops there. And this bevel goes all the way up to there. I mean, it's, it's very, very off. So... And I mean, you can see just by looking at it like this. This is the easiest way to tell. I mean, you can see how it just kind of raises up. Right here. Just raises right up. That bevel needs to be back down here. So that shows you how much metal I got to take off of there. Luckily, I can see where the temper line is. Tempered steel, the hardened steel goes all the way back to like where my finger is. You can see that line there. So I got lots of tempered steel to work with. And luckily this isn't something, you know, you do with your axes every day. Basically you get it, you put the, the bevel and the edge on it that you want. You hone it the way you want. And then all you have to do is worry about everyday maintenance and sharpening. 
that should never really remove that much metal. So let's get started on that evil heel. Okay, so I'm just putting some finishing touches on this. For the most part, it's hard to see in this light, but I can fix that. I'll show you when I'm done. Um, right now, it's got this bevel right here. still needs to come back just a hair. Um, but for the most part, this is straight. I got that kind of wiggle out of it. And now I'm just trying to even up these bevels. Just get them to where once I take this to the stone, I'm not going to have to mess with the file too much more. If I lay this on the file, you can kind of see there's there's no real play. There's no real wiggle room there on either side. Easier to see on this side because you can see there's no shadows really. Is it perfect? No. But it's a lot better than it was. And it's going to perform a lot better than it was. Now, for aesthetics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fine grit. Well, I'm going to start with 80 grit sandpaper. Sand out some of them file markings. I have uh, some well-used 80 grit which is probably about half what 80 grit is supposed to be. But I think I'll start with just a piece of fresh 80 grit. Let's see how that does first. And I'm just going to lightly polish it. Now keep in mind, I still really haven't worked the actual edge yet. I mean, it has an edge on it, but it's pretty, it's pretty sharp. Because when I was filing the bevel, I did bring it all the way to the edge. And it did start to get a burr on it. And I just quickly filed off that burr. But it's not really sharpened yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this I'm going to sand one side, and then what I'll do is I'll switch to the fine grit sandpaper, show you how it comes out. I don't know how true this is, but I've always thought if it's got 
less friction it'll cut a little better that's debatable I'm sure but it looks nicer So again, this is the side that I just hit with the both both grit sandpapers. And this is the side that I haven't touched with the sandpaper yet. Honestly, it doesn't make much of a difference. But I'm going to do that to the other side regardless. And then I'm going to hit it with a, uh, a cheap whetstone. Alright. I forgot I had this nifty little light over here. So I got both sides sanded. It make a huge difference eh, probably not I mean it feels a lot smoother you know I don't feel any uh, any real deep um, file marks so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually start to hone the edge now this is the first sharpening stone I ever bought. This is what I learned how to sharpen on. For axes, they make nice little puck ones. Um, and generally, you don't want to use something like this on an axe because you're going to be going in a circular motion. You're going to have to, you know, chew up your stone when you're done if you're going to plan on using it on knives. But I have a, a diamond stone, four-sided diamond stone that I use for my knives now and I'll use it on my axis too just um, you know it, not in that fashion to where I'm going to wear out the stone so all I do is I just kind of crook it like this I register that bevel and I just start going Start with the coarse side. Now I'm not really counting strokes, I'm more counting, you know, I'll just make even circles and I'll go, you know, one time and back one time back then I'll flip it around and do the same thing The, the stone on this side, you could see that shadow. And when that shadow line disappears, you know you've got that, be that bevel registered. And that's when you want to really 
kind of go at it. But it's a process. It's going to take a while. Like I said, it always, whenever you're really starting from, from scratch with the edge, it will take a while. But I'm going to get this sharpened up. And I'll get back to you guys once I'm at least ready to switch to the um, less coarse side of the stone. Okay, so I'm done with the rough side of the stone. I got a nice bevel on each side. The wiggle seems to be for the most part, completely gone out of that blade. And I think by the time I get done using the smooth side of the stone, it'll give that bevel a nice polished look and also take out any remaining tiny wiggle that there is and whatever that doesn't do the diamond grit stone will i just want to add i'm going to use the fine grit stone the same as i do the heavy grit just um you know small circles and that'll give it a more polished look and a more refined edge. Okay, so the technique starting out is the same. I'm not starting right on the edge. I'm actually... So if, if this would be right on the edge, I bring it back just enough to where you can start to see that shadow. And I actually start to grind just on the shoulder first. And bring the shoulder of that edge up to the edge. Just like this. Make sure you can see that. So that does a couple things for this side. It actually gives that that bevel a little bit more of a polished look, but it also, by the time you get to the edge, that it is going to be that much more straight and even because you're taking back that shoulder just a tiny bit. Uh, some people might call that a secondary bevel. I don't know. Um, everybody does things a little different, but that's just what I found works for me. And I mean, it's already starting to get quite an edge on it, and I've only done one side. Now this is hard to show on camera, but as I'm going, I'll notice, like right here in the middle of the blade, I got a nice connection, but there's certain areas 
where it's lifted off the stone just slightly. Now I could account for that. I could, you know, maneuver the stone so that it's hitting just the same as everywhere else. But then you're not removing those imperfections. So what I try to do is keep everything nice and level. And, by, and just keep going until those imperfections are gone. It takes a little longer to do it that way. But in the end, you're going to have a more refined edge. You're going to have a straighter edge. And I think you're going to have a better cutting edge. So I'll get back to you after I'm done with the fine polishing. Okay, so getting down to one of the last steps here. All I have left to do is hit this with the diamond stone and then strop it. Now, I'm not going to show stropping it. Um, there's lots of videos on how to strop blades and whatnot. This is more about freehand sharpening, rehoning, and... Uh, kind of creating that edge without any machine tools you know just with basic hand tools a file sharpening stone maybe a little sandpaper whatever you have you know um, so this is a four-sided diamond stone you can see it starts with the the most coarse 200 grit goes to 300 grit 400 grit and 600 grit 600 grit I tend to reserve this I'm probably not going to use this too much on the axe because um, this is more for like really polishing and honing a knife edge and I might not take this down that fine and even if I do it's just going to be a couple quick strokes on this but I am going to hit it pretty heavy with the 200 grit here. And honestly, I'm going to do that the same way that I do the other sharpening stones. I'm going to hold it at an angle at that bevel. And just kind of... Now one thing, I don't want to wear out these diamond stones... You know, I kind of care about these more than I care about the uh, the cheap ones. So I'm going to try to use as much of the stone as I can here. Just from that, should be able to see where that's hitting. It looks like it's hitting right back to here, which is right about where I want it to be hitting. So that looks like a pretty good angle. That'll take any little imperfections out. And that's going to make quick work of that. I really like these diamond stones.
I don't know if you can see on that bevel, the diamond stone dug in quite a bit farther down. I wasn't holding it quite the right angle. And that's part of the tricky thing about freehand sharpening. Is that you really got to make sure. Whereas, you know, having it set in a base, doing this method, can be very reliable. In my opinion, it can take a long time as well. And plus, we're just on the really coarse grit. And I will change up the technique once we get to the finer grits. So I'm going to run through a couple grits here. This is already getting quite sharp. But by the time I get done with it, All right, now just as is, that should be pretty sharp. See, I can do a quick paper test for you here before even going to the fine stone. Back up there, girl. So, I mean, getting some kind of clean cuts, but we could definitely be sharper. But we haven't taken it to the fine stone yet, and we haven't stropped it. So, let's take it to that fine stone. See if we can't get some nice cleaner cuts on that. So like I said, I'm not going to do much on this fine stone. Um, I like to conserve this for really sharp razor edges. You know, edges that really need to be razor sharp. But given that this is going to be used for a lot of carving tasks, um, and it has that narrow profile to it, it does lend itself to a really nice carving axe.
it's definitely got an edge on it. I mean, I would feel comfortable right now taking that out into the bush and being able to accomplish pretty much any task I would need to. Carving tent stakes, um, fine carving, um, delimbing of small trees. Um, But I think for so just with that, even without stropping, you can see we're getting some better slices. Tough because I mean it's a short blade, it's not a big long knife blade, but and I've never been good at these paper things. I don't know the trick to how people do them. I just shave with mine. And then I can tell you. To definitely shave some hair. So yeah, it's sharp. <sighs> Without power tools, I mean it. No, there's my kitty cat. Without power tools, you know, it definitely takes a while, without a doubt. Um, this took me quite a few hours to do, but it went from an axe that, yeah, you know, it would work. Well constructed, well put together, it would last. But now it's going to be a, a real high performance hatchet. And I can't wait to get this out and try it on my next trip. 
So thanks for joining me here at Jay's Modern Bushcraft, Bushcraft and Survival. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like this, um, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and you'll it'll let you know whenever I put out a new video. Hope to see you guys again uh, very soon and I'll get those the rest of the videos from my week-long trip out as well. And I've got a lot of new videos planned too. Um, I think we're going to do some hot tenting, some car camping, hot tenting. Um, I'm also going to do a uh, complete bushcraft shelter build with an indoor fireplace. Um, should be pretty fun. Hopefully I can accomplish both of those before, you know, the weather gets too warm. Um, my health permitting. Um, but I'll keep, I'll keep putting them out there. Thanks guys. Thanks for joining me.